Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this talk entitled Reconstructing Marine Food Webs of British Columbia Using Stable Isotopes, Consequences for Chinook Salmon. My name is Jacob Lerner. I'm a PhD student in the Pelagic Ecosystems Lab at the University of British Columbia. I study Chinook Salmon. Chinook are a great species to study for a lot of reasons, uh, listed here, but we're not going to go through them all right now. Uh, one of the things that makes Chinook Salmon so important is that more than any other Pacific Salmon species, they exhibit an extremely diverse suite of life histories. Life history determines Chinook freshwater residency time, ocean entry time, morphology, lipid accumulation or totally energy accumulation, and marine distribution. And I'm particularly interested in these last two, uh, both individually and how they interact with each other. And these are really important here in British Columbia because in BC we have an extremely uh, diverse group of life history types of Chinook salmon encompassing almost all possible life history types, uh, coexisting in an extremely complex environment composed of multiple ecoregions, each with its own distinct oceanography, productivity, and species composition. Uh, so the question I want to answer is, what are the trophic relationships that define BC's marine food webs? How does this impact Chinook salmon? With the objective being to use stable isotopes to delineate the food web structure in BC coastal ecoregions and identify the trophic pathways that impact Chinook foraging and energy density. So the main tool here is stable isotope analysis. Uh, we don't have time to delve into the details, but a quick overview is that these are natural chemical tracers that are used to resolve food webs. They can examine spatial habitat and resource use, and they can we can use them to calculate trophic level and analyze trophic niche. Uh, to do this project, we did a full marine ecosystem sampling program uh, where we boarded a trawl survey and traveled to four different regions uh, around the BC coast. These were the Strait of Georgia, Queen Charlotte Strait, Queen Charlotte Sound, and Juan de Fuca. Uh, and we collected over a thousand samples from everything from the particulate organic matter to zooplankton, uh, to jellyfish, to large body Chinook salmon. Uh, after collecting all the data and analyzing for stable isotopes, uh, some of our early results shown here exhibit that food chain length uh, shown in the nitrogen range is highest in Juan de Fuca, it gets lower in inland, water, inland waters uh, with a slight bump in the Strait of Georgia. And the basal resource structure shown here in the carbon on the right graph in the carbon range uh, is largest in Juan de Fuca, uh, lower in inland waters, but seems to increase with increasing terrestrial inputs. Uh, what's interesting is how uh, Chinook trophic level seems to track these food web metrics. Um, and that Chinook feeding in areas with longer food webs seem to feed at higher trophic levels, uh, where Chinook in areas with shorter food webs, such as the Strait of Georgia, feed at lower trophic levels. So the next step is to examine how this impacts Chinook uh, foraging and life history and how this impacts energy density. Uh, and that's all that I have time for. I'll take any questions or input. This is an ongoing project, so I'm always looking for uh, both of these. Thank you.